Welcome back everyone, this will be episode number 9 of Learning Structured Text for PLC's video series. Uh, on the end of the last episode, I think I arrayed these pizza ovens uh, and made a couple of them. Called them both and showed you that you can make an array of pretty much any kind of data type. So, this episode we'll talk more about arraying those data types. Um, I'll talk a little bit about enumerations and a little bit about structures and an example of each one of those. So sort of covered arrays already um, informally. Um, the thing I forgot to do here was to uh, define a counter for my for my timer so or sorry for my for loop. So now that that's taken care of, um, one other thing I'm running into is I don't really want um, to have to hard code these values. so sometimes it's nice to do like uh, max ovens or something like that. And so you can actually define your array with that. And so then down here in a very constant, let's see if I can remember how to do this. So that would be a dent equals um, one, which is really two because the array starts at a zero. You can really start the array at anything. You can actually, strangely enough, start the array as a negative number. So you can have like a negative to a positive array. It's, it's kind of neat. Um, but probably most programmers would shoot you for that, so I would steer clear of that. Anyway, um, so you can put max ovens here, and that way um, we'll make sure we don't overrun and try to call this with the wrong um, parameter here, because it'll let you try to reference this with like a 15 there if we don't have 15 array element items, and um, that won't necessarily page fault your PLC, but pretty much it will eventually. It does weird things on read. Um, right, if I were to write data here, it would be particularly bad. And I guess technically I am writing some data. So this is going to be off in, in no man's land if you get these numbers wrong. So it's always a good idea to validate those and make sure they're in range of your array. So there's a few other tricks as well, like an array checking uh, function that you can put in your code that'll kind of automatically check arrays for bounds and stuff and keep bad things from happening. But anyway, if they're happening, you've got trouble. So. I needed to fix that. So for 0, 2, 1, do call it with the i. So that's going to go through and call both of those for me. And then all I have to do if I want more pizza ovens is change this to like 5 or something. And now I've got a total of 6 ovens counting oven number 0. So get that back here to uh, 1 and move on. I will show you a uh, similar syntax if you want, for instance, an array of uh, booleans. So you would do uh, array my bools. And it's an array, 0 dot dot 100 of bool. So this, when you look at it online, will just be a list of true falses all the way down. And uh, and that's it. You can do that for any data type, you know, integer, um, denager, real, all of these things, strings you can do. Um, so you can uh, pretty much array anything. It's, it's pretty cool. So... Once you get them in an array, sometimes that's just a better way to reference things. Like if you have a grid or a queue or something like that, an array is a really nice way to do things so that you can kind of shift things forward and back in the array and um, pull elements out of the array and po poke new elements in and stuff. So you can get pretty crazy with them. Anyway, that's about all I'm going to say on arrays at the moment. Um, we'll get into a little bit more of them uh, when I show you the other types of data. So sticking with our current theme, uh, of the pizza oven. I'm trying to think of something that would be nice to uh, to turn into a structure to explain how those work. So I'm thinking the best thing is to uh, to make a pizza so that our parts, if you know, pizzas are our parts, so our parts can track some data. So um, what you would do is come into data unit types here and right click add um, data unit type here, DUT. And uh, what we want at the moment is a structure. So we'll call it um, st underscore pizza. So this nomenclature is uh, capital st underscore for the definition of a structure. And then each element uh, that you instantiate of that structure um, has a lowercase st like that. So um, things that we care about um, on a pizza. So let's do, uh, let's say, is there a pizza, like does it exist? This probably seems a little odd, but um, I'll explain that in a minute. Um, what else do we care about? Let's see. Um, 
DT um, time entered oven. And we'll call that a date time and DT time exited, exited oven. It's a DT. Um, we'll do a um, something like a T time in oven, T time value, and then um, let's do a, um, for now we will do a pepperoni, and that's a boolean, and so we'll say uh, that goes true if uh, the pizza type is pepperoni, pepperoni. Um, so what this is doing is we can, we've can we now made a definition, or this is called a structure, but a structure definition um, that we can then come in here and in our pizza oven, we can just say instead of these uh, uh, pizza done, pizza in oven, pizza on deck, we can now define um, locations for our pizzas. So ST, um, well, actually I jumped ahead a little bit there. Let's turn these booleans into structures. So anywhere B pizza on deck happens, we'll turn that into ST pizza on deck, um, and it's uh, of type ST pizza. So now that's going to break all of our code basically. So anywhere we do pizza on deck like this, I've got to go in and change it to ST pizza on deck dot B exist. So we're saying there is a pizza there in this pizza on deck location here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and knock those out everywhere in the code that we used them, and I'm just going to change this, so I'll be right back. All right, so I got that all fixed up now. Um, let's log in and do a quick refresh on what's going on. So basically, we start a new pizza here. It immediately goes into the oven. It's cooking. It cooks three seconds. The buzzer starts coming on. Our status goes to it's burning the pizza. It can't move this one out of the oven until this one gets on the exit conveyor, so we'll remove that one. It moves over, quits burning the pizza, and so on, and we'll remove that. So this is just our toy mock-up system here uh, to try to learn the code a little bit better. So what I want to do is actually track these pizzas and, and have some sort of uh, data associated with them. So we've used a structure here. Let's go back to our definition. We've used the structure to define that. And basically, inside uh, of FB Pizza Oven here, you can see that structure instantiated. So I've now uh, just used the exist bit to show whether the pizza is present in that location. So each one of these is a location of possible pizza, not actually a pizza. So um, that B exist means do we have a pizza in this location? So what we can do, um, we've got some problems. So at the moment we say if there's one on deck and there's not one in the oven to uh, take the one out of in deck and put it in the oven. So what we really need to do here, uh, or what I typically will do, is uh, I will say that the pizza in the oven now equals the pizza on deck. And so that'll copy that entire structure. So we don't need to go and call out every single element. It'll just copy that structure over. So we're moving the pizza and any data that it has associated with it in the structure here over with it into the oven. So the other thing we need to do now is delete this one. So there's not a super great way to just null out a structure typically, or at least not that I'm aware of. So what I'll often do is do a var constant here and I'll do a st null pizza and that'll be an st pizza. And I intentionally just leave this blank. And so anytime you want to remove a pizza completely, like we took this one off of pizza on deck, we can copy the null pizza into it. So uh, we will remove pizza, and typically this would be a st null pizza or something, something very obvious that that's a constant. Um, all caps is what I usually use. So um, anyway, we've done that. Now when the pizza's in the oven, we need to move that data along with it. So we'll go back down to our state machine. Can we move the pizza out of the oven? If the one that's done doesn't exist anymore, um, we can now um, turn it off and move the one out of the oven. So this is where we need to do our same thing. Pizza done equals pizza in oven. 
and so now its existence will travel with it because we already existed quote unquote it way up here um, right here we've already existed it so it traveled into the oven and it, tra it traveled into the oven on this uh, line here and it travels out of the oven on this line here so we've got the same thing though the pizza in the oven we need to null out and um, let's null that like so and turn the buzzer off just like we did before so um, you might start to notice that this would be a lot more difficult to worry about the timing of when the pizza is in the oven when this next one's coming in if it all sort of happens all at once so having the state machine is very helpful to uh, to know that if you're doing a lot of this data moving back and forth that it all happens in order in the way you want it to happen so um, that should be about it the only other thing I can think of is when we push those buttons all we're doing is nulling the existence of the pizza I want to say so when I'm removing I'm nulling the existence of the pizza which is good but that data is still going to be lingering so rather than nulling the existence by turning it off I will null it by nulling it really um, so if we are loading a pizza the data has already been nulled back here so we are about to load one into an empty slot it's going to exist it um, so that should be all good um, no data you know initially we don't have any data so um, we can add some stuff with that pepperoni bit later on and uh, that should do some do some good stuff for us there so um, let's just see if this works now um, memory's moving because of that new uh, new data structure so be aware that some memory does move around from time to time let's see if we broke it new pizza ready it's on deck it's done it automatically moved out just like it's supposed to I think it's working I think that's what we wanted pretty much let's move it remove it done we tested everything okay so back in Maine we've got FB pizza oven that's of type of type FB pizza oven. It's got some inputs to load and remove the pizza, things like that. Um, it's got some triggers that handle some of that stuff, a timer, and then here's our structure we created. So the null, of course, is just null everything. So even the date times are back in 1970, just hanging out. Um, these pizza duns all nulled at the moment with the system just sitting here. So that's what they look like, and you can pop through all these. So Keep in mind there might be some merit to actually making these an array. I would suggest it because if your conveyor gets a lot longer and stuff like that, it's super easy to, to change the bounds of that array and uh, and handle all you know what what different areas do what and um, and so on. So one last uh, thing I wanted to talk about on this video is we've got the structure here. Oops, let me hop offline. Um, the structure here we have this B pepperoni so imagine of course we're gonna have more than just pepperoni so um, what you could do here is make this like a dent and call it uh, like I type something like that and then this would be like a zero equals cheese one equals pep two equals sausage right something like that so the problem with this of course is this definition has to follow around in the code or else you have no clue what's going on so if only there was a way to enumerate these into that and there is so we will do a new data unit type called an enumeration here and we will call it um, pizza types and I call that with a capital E ahead of it E pizza types open and E new member Ooh, that's new they added that so um, here we would do E um, type pepper, pepperoni um, and let's grab that and that this would now be sausage and that's going to be a two this will be a one and this one actually I want cheese a zero like I said before so the reason I put well E is it's an enumeration that helps you know it's not some other variable name or something like that um, type I always put type or some descriptor there because these essentially become global variable names and unless you dig in and deep with namespaces and stuff like that to keep it all separate um, something like uh, null as a type like 
maybe we don't want zero to be cheese. We want zero to be an uh, unknown type or something like that. And that's pretty common. So if you just name it null, then you've then used null for your global keyword. It's, it's not very cool. So I always try to make these specific to the exact enum. Um, and of course, comment it, what it is, what it does, and all that good stuff. So here, we're changing this. This is now going to be uh, E type. And this would be um, E pizza types. So we've now instantiated inside. So this is an enumeration inside a structure. So back in here in our FB thing, if we actually, we just go online now. Oh, no. What have I done? Ah, got it. It's these commas need to be put here and here. So that should fix our syntax. Hop on here. We're running. And now what we have is a wonderful, uh, let's go find a pizza here. We've got this nice E type. And so what we can do is when we first make our pizza, we load it in, we say, we can say uh, st pizza on deck dot E type equals E um, type pepperoni. And so what we can do, ah, what have I done? What have I done? E type equal, aha. There we go. So now we're saying it's type pepperoni. So this one says type cheese here. Type pepperoni, you can tell it's constant as one. You can literally define each one of these as a literal, or you can leave them all blank after zero, and it'll auto increment. So you really don't have to care about that number. Just be careful because when you integrate with an HMI, they're going to want that number probably and be able to decode it, and it's kind of a mess. So, anyway, moving forward though, we've now given this a type pepperoni every time just for now um, to keep things short here. So, I'm going to make a new pizza. It's in the oven now. I'm going to make another new one. Blah, blah. They've moved over. Um, so, I can check that last pizza in the oven, da, 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 or any of them really, and it's type pepperoni. So, if I want, I can hop offline just. Let's do a sausage back online. It's kind of a cheesy way to do it. But that now we've got one in slot one. So uh, check back here. Pizza on deck is type sausage. So as I move that, let's do it just for the sake to be sure. So I, now that's the sausage one in the oven. And now that's the sausage one on the end. And let's check it. The done. Oh, sorry. Which one is it? The done one is a uh, sausage. So our data is traveling along with it. So as we start populating these and picture, you know, a conveyor that moves on with it, you want to know where those are. Say a robot's got to pick up all the pepperonis and move them into a box or pick up all the cheeses, move them into a different box. It knows because the data's traveled with it. So you can get the timestamps and all that good stuff. So um, that's an example of sort of how to use a structure and move that data with the part and enums and arrays and structures yeah that's it so um, that's sort of the gist of uh, of some of the more advanced data types there are some more stuff I didn't even cover global variables so basically all the same stuff can go global that's all I'm gonna say about it but um, if you like these videos then check out the next ones or subscribe and all that good stuff so I'll see you on the next video